Here's the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera 4K. This is a rental. I was just using it on a small multi-cam shoot. And in this video, I wanted to talk about my first impressions with uh, using this camera uh, with other types of cameras, with, with Canon C100s and with a GH4, not with a bunch of other micro cinema cameras or any other Blackmagic cameras, uh, just this one. Uh, and the reason why I, I bring that up and make that a point uh, is that this camera, as I found out using it, really needs uh, to be in the Blackmagic ecosystem. And uh, this camera specifically is uh, what I think is meant for multi-cam shoots that go into a switcher, that feed into a switcher like their uh, Blackmagic uh, ATEM series of switchers and recorders, recording decks. That's what this camera is meant for. It's meant for the studio setting where you're going to have about, you know, four of these and maybe you'll have their studio uh, cameras and you, you, you link them all up with SDI, HDSDI, and then you feed them all into a switcher and then the switcher records with their deck, uh, on their deck. Or you can isolate every camera on their own decks, so that's what it's for. But that's not what I. But that's not what I used it for. So I tried to mix and match cameras because I. I uh, there's a shoot that I'm doing right now that needs an overhead camera, and uh, at first I was mounting this GH4, and I put it on top of uh, the ceiling, uh, pointed down, and I had a seven to fourteen millimeter lens. And that was supposed to be a wide angle overhead shot that I was I was getting for my multi-cam shoot. But I thought that this weighed a little bit too much um, it, for in my setting. I don't it didn't have a grid up there. I just kind of mounted it on the ceiling. And I thought the micro cinema camera would be the best, would be a better uh, option since it's lighter and it doesn't record in the camera. You you need an external recorder. So what I did is I also rented a Atomos Shogun here, a 4K recorder, and get 4K into the Shogun, and I could be uh, uh, shoot tethered with a HDSDI cable, like a long HDSDI cable, and I could have this mounted. Once I set it, I could forget it and do all the recording there, and not have to go up to the ceiling to adjust the camera. So that was my scenario. That's what I was using this camera for. And under those circumstances with that gear, this was not a very good choice. And uh, I, I just had this for a couple days, so there might be some features on it that I just, you know, I uh, haven't discovered yet because I didn't have the time or the patience to go through the manual, which I could not find, by the way. I searched all over Blackmagic's website. I could not find a manual for this camera on how to use all the features. I just kind of had to jump in and, and use it. And in that sense, this was kind of tricky to figure out because it's not your typical interface uh, that DSLRs or even traditional camcorders use. So it took me a, a fair amount of time or more time than uh, I thought it would take, like a good um, hour to figure everything out myself before I could actually use it uh, on my shoot. Here are the, the good things about this camera that, that I like. And then I have a lot of negative things, but the good things, I'll get that out of the way. The good things is this is a really small camera. It's the size of a, a, a softball and it's fairly light. Uh, here's the uh, 7 to 14 millimeter Panasonic lens, and I, I would say the camera weighs less than this lens. So that, that's good in, in its weight. And it also has HDMI, HDSDI, it's got a microphone jack, a headphone jack, it takes a Canon E6 batteries that are in the Canon 5D, Canon 7D, 70D, 7D, very common battery in the back. It doesn't last very long. It lasts like an hour and 15 minutes, but uh, or an hour with if you're shooting 4K. But you know, it's a small compact battery. Uh, a lot of people who have Canon have a lot of these. 
And I like that it's a, a Panasonic uh, or a Micro Four Thirds native mount. Now I've never used any of the other Black Magic cameras, so I'm really only comparing this to the GH4, which is the only other consumer 4K camera I've used. And in compared to the GH4, I think uh, it's not as good in low light, but uh, I've noticed that the uh, quality is similar to the GH4. So now the negative things, which are a lot of negative issues I have with this camera. So let, let me start by uh, actually using it, turning it on and showing you firsthand why I don't like this camera for what I was using it for. So let's pop on the Canon battery. It doesn't last very long, but let's just pop it in. Pop it in. Uh, I, I wanted to shoot this on a long, all, all day, and this battery wasn't going to last all day. So one of the first things I don't like about this camera is to power it uh, with wall power. You have to use their expansion port. Now their expansion port comes with, here's their expansion plug, comes with all these cables here. Now these cables, there's, you have some pan, tilt, uh, a length control. You have the controls that go into your AT, uh, ATEM switcher. These are all useful for those features, but they're all connected into one. And the power cable is also connected into all these cables. And to power this camera, uh, a wall power, you have to plug this into here, the expansion cable. And here is the, which one is it? No, that's the link. This cable is the power cable. And they give you uh, wall power, AC power. And you plug that in there like that. But all this crap is, is there with it. It it's kind of defeats the purpose of its compact size when you have this huge, all these cables that I don't even use connected to it. And I had to get a Velcro and just Velcro all these other cables in, in a little bundle so that it was out of the way and it wasn't dangling in front of the lens. Uh, I thought that was weird. Well, why doesn't this camera have its own just separate, you know, power? Just, they could have just fit another power cable socket somewhere around here by itself. So you don't need this expansion cable system. If you don't need, if you don't use it, you don't have to, you know, you put it on the camera. If you don't need all these plugs, you shouldn't have to be forced to use it all just to power the camera on a wall. The Blackmagic also recommends that you purchase their video assist monitor, uh, monitor recorder. This is a, a small HD DP4, but they recommend that you get their monitor because it, it connects to the camera and you can you need a, a monitor to to change all the settings. You need one, so they recommend buying theirs, proprietary one. But I just didn't. Um, it wasn't available to rent, so I just was using my DP4. At first, I thought I could do everything on the uh, Atomos, but here's another issue that I ran into. Here's their HDSDI adapter. They have a little micro adapter and I put the out and then with this one I connected it to a longer HDSDI cable and the HDSDI cable I connect in the input back there. Camera turns on, on light, there's a fan. It's not super, super loud but I can hear it. So this is fine and dandy. You can, it's a clean um, source, HDSDI source, so you can just start recording and uh, you're good to go, but you can't, if you want to go into the menu here to change any of the settings, I hit menu and the menu does not pop up on the HDSDI uh, port. In order to go into the camera settings, you need to be hooked up to the uh, either the expansion port or the HDMI port. It does not work on the HDSDI. So to access everything are only these buttons and the buttons you get are the power button, the power button, the menu button, and then to uh, go through the menu you go the up and down and then you hit the set is the, like your enter key. 
those are, that's all you get. If you notice all around the camera, there are no other buttons anywhere. And some people are like, oh, where's the record button? Because you don't record on this camera. This camera is only meant to feed the video signal in. So there's no record button. There's just these. So once you go into the menu, you can adjust a lot of the settings, except they're not done in a very intuitive way. So I'm going to go to my menu. There's my menu settings. And then here's what you get. You get the camera settings and you can adjust your video format, your gain, the detail, auto exposure, white balance, and shutter. And then you can go to your remote, which I, I'm not going to use because you need the expansion port. Some setup features, which I didn't really use. The monitoring, which gives you overlay, zebra, focus peaking, um, your tally light brightness, uh, HDMI over, uh, meters, and then your audio settings. Uh, th this supposedly has a built-in mic, but uh, for some reason it wasn't working or I just didn't figure it out how to record audio um, with the onboard mic. So I just plugged in a mic on my Atomos and I got the audio that way. So you can change your shutter speed. So that's 1 1 because I shoot at 30p. You can change your white balance, but you don't really, uh, you aren't really able to dial in your uh, f-stop and your ISO. You don't really even know your ISO or your f-stop values. So you only get your gain. So gain is the ISO. You get 0 dB, 6 dB, 12 dB, and 18 dB. So I got it at the highest gain. And then in order to change your f-stop, you can't do it on any of these control buttons. The way to change your f-stop is to manually hit the up or down arrows. See how it's, the image is getting darker because I'm closing down the iris. And then I hit that up and you should see more. There you go. So this is only an f4 lens, so it's not even that bright. And I'm kind of in a dark room. And this appears to only be like ISO 800 to me. So it's not very good in low light. The last thing I, I really don't like about this camera is that it takes uh, Micro Four Thirds, it's a native Micro Four Thirds mount, but there's no auto focus. All the focus is manual and you, at least with, the, with these settings, if you have their switcher, you might be able to dial in the focus remotely using their switcher and their computer interface, their software interface. But just on the camera with this configuration and the Shogun there, if I wanted to adjust the um, focus, I don't have any focus controls. I can't half press the shutter. Like if you have a DSLR, all, all you would do it to sometimes to if it, you're on uh, auto focus, you would or manual focus, you can go to auto, half press the shutter, and then it can focus, and then you can go back to manual. The only way to adjust the focus with this setup is to change the ring. And then once you change the ring, you have to be in their peaking setting in order to really know it's in focus. And even then, you don't know the value of the focus. You don't know what the feet is, uh, the distance of your focus ring. You're just turning it to infinity until the peaking shows you that everything's in focus. And unless I buy into the whole Blackmagic ecosystem and get their switcher, their, their decks, and all their control units, and get more of these micro cameras or their other cinema cameras, uh, I, I'll, I'll probably, that's when I can, I think it's, I can invest in all that. But when I'm just using the micro cinema camera 4K by itself with other cameras from different manufacturers, it does not work. It's a bad investment. I think it's very difficult to use. It doesn't give you the same quality. And, uh, you know, I really don't see why anyone would get that camera unless they have the whole Blackmagic ecosystem with their switchers and their uh, all their software. Then, yeah, get the Blackmagic cam my micro camera and I'll get more. That makes sense to me. But just by itself, bad investment, bad control interface, not easy to use. There you go. Some of you have a Metabones speed booster 
Uh, this one's a Canon speed booster. But when I did try it, I connected it and I was about to screw it in, but it was really, really tight. And in order to screw it on, I would be rubbing the metal against this metal and probably scraping it or causing some damage. Uh, it does fit. It's just, I don't want to force it, so I'm not going to use it. I also don't like this camera to begin with. So I think it works, but I'm not going to test it out in this video.